Welcome back. This is Chris Toy, your Boomer Tech Guide, and today we are going to make egg rolls and spring rolls. So one of the things that people sometimes wonder is, what's the difference? Well, in China, there's no such thing as egg rolls. So all these rolls are actually called spring rolls, and they are made in the spring during Chinese New Year. So egg rolls are kind of like a Chinese American adaptation. Um, also, in kind of today's use, egg rolls tend to be larger and they're filled with a meat and vegetable filling, whereas spring rolls tend to be more delicate and uh, are usually just vegetarian. But, you know, you could kind of mix and match. So today we're going to make egg rolls with um, some ground chicken and vegetables. And then we're going to make some vegetarian spring rolls. And I'm going to be sharing an idea that my wife Joan came up with for turning egg roll wrappers into spring roll wrappers. So why don't we get started? Our ingredients if we kind of go over them. We're going to get some, we're going to use these egg roll wrappers, and you can get these right in the refrigerated section of your, um, of your grocery. We'll have some scallions. We also are going to use some shredded um, cabbage, sometimes known as coleslaw. You can shred your own, or you can have the grocery, you know, the bag, you can just you can just buy that if you would like. And I'm also going to shred up some carrots for a little bit of texture and color. For the egg rolls, we're going to um, use some ground chicken. So I'm going to start off by preparing the filling for the egg rolls. And it's really just a really quick stir-fry process. So what we'll do is we'll put some flavoring in, and I'm going to use my favorite, some ginger and some garlic. And I'm just saving a little bit of the garlic aside for my spring rolls, just in case you're wondering. And what we'll do is we're gonna put in a very little bit, probably like a, a, a tablespoon of oil into my preheated wok and we'll just turn that right on medium high so we'll get that so that the oil is, is going to heat up and we will here we go that's the uh, ginger there's our garlic we'll just put that in together I'm using my knuckles against the uh, knife to make sure that I'm nowhere near that sharp edge. So, we'll put this in. This should sizzle right away. There we go. So, before that gets too hot, what I'll do is I'll put in I'm going to put in about a quarter pound of this ground chicken. You can use ground pork. You could use uh, ground beef, shrimp, lobster, whatever you'd like to do. Just chop it up. So this will cook pretty quickly. So that's going to infuse the flavor of the ginger and the garlic. And I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to this. This is my favorite way to add salt and pepper is this uh, everyday seasoning. I'll probably put in maybe a quarter of a teaspoon, not a lot. We don't want it too salty, but do that to taste. And the reason I'm not adding soy sauce is that 
We want this to be a relatively dry mixture because if it's soggy, what will happen is the moisture will dissolve the uh, wrapper. There we go. And again, that's on medium high. So that chicken is cooked. And what I'll do now is I'm going to add some shredded carrots. guys right in. We're just going to soften those up a little bit. Nice. And to that, I'll add shredded cabbage or coleslaw. And I'm going to remember to save some for my spring rolls. So I'm just going to soften this up a little bit. I don't want it to be really soggy. So I'm going to turn this heat down now. And we're going to take this filling out. We're going to let this cool off just a little bit. Just to make it easy for us to handle it in a, in a minute or so. So there's our filling. It would be tempting just to try that filling. All right. So while that's cooling off a little bit, let's um, let's go over here and let's check our oil. We're going to deep fry these. And here we have this is my larger 14-inch wok and. I've got about maybe an inch of oil in the wok and I'm going to put my ch chopstick in and what I want is I want the chopstick to bubble and you can kind of see that that's happening. I've got to turn it up a little bit. I'd like it to bubble a little bit more. You don't want the oil to be too cold because the, um, the egg roll will sit in the oil too long. And you really only want to, believe it or not, you only want to have that in the oil, the, the egg roll in the oil, for between five and 10 seconds. So that's heating up nicely. All right. So while that's heating up, let's do a, let's go over here and let's mix up some duck sauce. And the duck sauce really only requires three ingredients. And the three ingredients are applesauce. So we have some homemade applesauce here, some crushed pineapple, and some balsamic glaze. So we'll Let's do this. So in this instance, I'm going to put in equal parts of duck sauce and pineapple. That's just a 
just a small can of pineapple. We just mix that together. And to that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of balsamic glaze. And I'll just mix that together. So if you don't have balsamic glaze, you can use a mixture of um, brown sugar and cider vinegar is really good. Or red wine vinegar would be pretty good as well. If you don't have applesauce, you could puree up some pears or peaches, even grapes. There we go. So that's ready. So, our oil is heated up, so that's good, bubbling. So let's take a wrapper. So these are, this is just pasta. And what we'll do is we'll take two or three tablespoons of the filling. We'll put it right across the center. I know we're, we're missing out on baseball season, but I'll use a baseball metaphor to uh, remind myself how to do this. So I'm going to, this is the shape of the, of the egg roll. And what I'll do is I'm gonna paint around the bases with three fingers. The water is the glue. Then I'll take first and third and I'll just bring them together right over pitcher's mound. They can overlap like a quarter of an inch. Don't overlap too much or it'll shorten your, your, your egg roll. And then I will take home plate. I'll bring it up behind pitcher's mound, give it a little tuck, and then we'll roll that right up. I'm gonna make sure that second base is nice and wet because that is where the egg roll will seal. All right, we'll do that one more time. You wanna make sure that you only get one layer. They tend to um, stick together. So here you can see I have two layers. All right. We'll take a couple tablespoons, a couple, three tablespoons right across pitcher's mound. And second base, first and third. Pitcher's mound right up. And we'll roll that. So we've got two of these guys. So let's go over here. Check this again. Bubbling, you see the bubbling? That's good. So what we'll do before we put the egg roll in, we're gonna pat it, we're gonna flatten it a little bit. And we do that so that when I go to turn it over, it doesn't try to roll back over. So if it's a little bit flattened, it'll be easier to get both sides fried. So here we go. We're gonna slide one in, and you can see that it just starts bubbling right away, and that's what you want. And so just like a pancake, 
you look around the edge and when the edge has turned light brown, it's time to turn it over. So that was probably about five seconds. And when you turn it over, the second side takes even less time. So we'll pull that right out. And this uh, moon, half moon rack is really great. What it does, you can see it, is it lets the oil drip down back into the wok and it also keeps it warm. So I put the second one in. It's turned brown around the edges. So we'll give it a turn. You don't have to use chopsticks if you don't want. You can use tongs, two forks. All right, and then we'll just grab this guy. And you can see, I'll turn him over so you can see. So that cooked really nicely. So when I serve egg rolls, what I like to do is I like to cut them at a 45 degree angle. So you can see what happens is they make a great scoop. So Let's try this one. It's really hot. It all is. And so you scoop that. Yum. Fresh and tasty. But we're not done yet. But wait, there's more. So let's let this rest over here. So I promised you a hack. And um, Normally, oh, thank you. Normally, you have to buy the um, spring roll wrappers separately, and they are very thin, They're almost like phyllo dough. But what we found out is that if you take a stack of wrappers. I'm going to take three here. Take a stack of wrappers and run them through the thinnest setting on a pasta roller. They actually become spring roll wrappers. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off about an inch of this so that it fits here. And this is on the thinnest setting. And we have three, three, um, three wrappers. So what we'll do, I'm gonna make sure that these aren't folded back. There we go. Here we go, we're going to put this right through. And you can see that we have one, very thin, and three wrappers. So what I'll do now is I'll cut these <coughs> into squares. But before I do that, because I don't want them to dry out, what we'll do is we'll put the filling together for the <coughs> spring roll wrappers. So remember what we said is that spring roll wrappers are more delicate and you really only um, use vegetables. So we'll start off with just a touch of oil. There we go, we'll turn this heat on. 
and we'll do our smashing again. Chop that up. We're not going to put in our meat, we're going to put in our cabbage. And I'm going to put in a few scallions slivered up. So if you wanted to add a little protein to this, you could crumble up some uh, tofu. If I were going to use tofu, I'd use some extra firm because it has less liquid. Remember, you want this to be pretty dry. And maybe a little bit of salt and pepper. cool off a little bit and while it's cooling off what we'll do is we will cut our spring roll wrappers into squares and the easy way to do that is simply to fold down so you get a 45 degree angle and just slice again so you can see when you roll out the egg roll wrappers, you'll get twice as many spring roll wrappers. So instead of three, you have six. But they're gonna be a lot smaller. Spring rolls tend to be appetizers. So here we go. It's the same way, just on a smaller scale. So there's our baseball diamond. We'll take probably just maybe a, a tablespoon or so right on pitcher's mound. Let's paint around the bases. Make sure second base is nice and wet. First and third, right over. Home plate up to second base, uh, pitcher's mound rather, and then we'll roll it up to second base. And you can see the difference in the size <coughs> of, of these. Let's do one more, just so you can get the idea. You don't want to overfill, overfill these, because the, the uh, dough is it's pretty tender. But you can see, you can see, almost see right through the dough. You can see the pattern of the cutting board. There we go. Up. Tuck and roll. All right, let's do this. Let's make sure. So you really want to make sure this is nice and nice and warm. So, yep. See, it's bubbling. That's what you want. And by the way, bubbling is probably around 340, 350 degrees. If it catches fire, it's too hot. So flatten these. We'll just slide those right in. 
I'll slide that one in. By the time I put that second one in, that first one, you can see it starting to turn brown around the edges. So we'll just turn that over. See, it's a good thing we flattened it because it does want to flip over. And then we'll do this one here. There. This one, whoops, see, this one flipped over. I wasn't firm enough with it. There. Right. So here's, this one's done. This one's misbehaving. I'm just put him in there. All right. So, spring roll. Oh, no, spring roll, egg roll. So I'm going to try this spring roll. Oh, that's hot. Really hot. This is uh, the best part of teaching cooking. So here's our spring roll. Yum. So that's it. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.